So I have two squares of material, a couple of rubber rings to stop things falling off the edge, and then I've got a couple of ice cubes. So let's see what happens. So this guy is still pretty okay, whereas this one's just a load of mush. Now, both of these things, they look pretty identical, but actually they're made out of different materials. This one uh, is made out of a plastic and this is made out of metal. But the important thing is that both of these started and they are at the same temperature. However, actually when I'm holding it like this, this one here, even though it's the same temperature as this block here, feels a lot colder. And this is because of conduction and how some materials are better thermal conductors than others. Now these blocks just represent the particles in a typical solid. They're sort of fairly regularly arranged. Now the way that um, heat is conducted is that if you maybe start to heat up this side over here, as the particles increase their temperature, they start to vibrate more. And as they vibrate more, they occasionally knock into the particles next to them, which then cause these ones to vibrate. And then what happens is, as they keep going along, they're transferring their kinetic energy from one to the other, and that means that very slowly over time, or to quickly depending on the material, that these vibrations pass onto these vibrations and they just pass the vibrations along that material. Now, some materials are better conductors than others. Uh, and also some things are really bad at conducting and these are called insulators. For example, in a gas, the particles are gonna be fairly widely spread apart. And that means because it takes a while for them to transfer their energy to the other particles, conduction happens a lot slower in gases than it does in solids. But why is it that some solids are better than others? So this is the conducting star and there are five different metals and just a handle to hold it over here. So what we have is this one is brass, we've got iron, we've got aluminium, we've got some stainless steel and then finally some copper. Now at the end of each of these is a hole and what I have is uh, sometimes you can use Vaseline, I've just got some lip balm. And what I'm going to do is just put a small amount of lip balm into the end of each hole and then I'm going to put in a ball bearing into each one of these. Now I've used the same amount of Vaseline or lip balm in each of these so it's a nice fair test. I'm just going to put the ball bearings in again to the same depth and what the uh, the kind of lip balm is going to be doing, it's just going to be holding all of these things in so we can see that uh, they're all held in there and if I turn this over none of them fall out. What will make them fall out is if this gets too hot it turns a lot uh, more liquid, it turns runnier and then it can't hold the ball bearings in anymore. So what we're going to do is we're just going to heat this up and see which of these is a better conductor than the others. Now again, if you were to do an investigation like this, we've got the same diameter rods, they're all the same length, and maybe you could then uh, plot some data for the time it takes for the ball bearings to fall out of the ends. So why is it that some metals are much better conductors than others? Well, I guess if we just look at this simple model we had earlier, where you had particles that when they vibrate more, if you're maybe heating up this side over here, when these vibrate more, they pass on their vibrations along. Well, that doesn't really explain why some materials which are solid are good insulators. Now, the reason that metals are good conductors of heat is because of free electrons. Now, inside the actual structure, what we have is we have these positive metal ions surrounded by this sea of delocalized free electrons. And that means that maybe one or, one or two of the outer electrons from the atom has sort of become separated and it can just sort of hang around and move from place to place. 
Now, in a metal, when you start to heat up maybe this side, in addition to this particle starting to vibrate quicker and then passing its vibrations onto neighbouring particles, it also causes the electrons to go shooting around as well. Now, these electrons, as they're shooting around, they can collide into other metal ions. They can then cause them to vibrate. And because these can move so easily through and around that material, it means that the vibrations are passed on really quickly. And that's why it's a very good thermal conductor. And if we look at different materials, we find that some of them have even more of these free electrons. So things like copper, for example, not only is it a very good electrical conductor, it's also a very good thermal conductor. It's got so many of these free electrons that are kind of just delocalised and they can, can just basically move through that material. That means that when this starts to vibrate, very quickly the vibrations are passed on all the way through. And that's why copper in particular is a very good conductor. So conduction is really important, and effectively the more conductive something is, we say it's got a higher thermal conductivity, whereas things which are really poor conductors are known as good insulators. And metals are particularly good because it's the electrons inside that can pass the vibrations on really quickly.